And as soon as Terran and Orphan go through the door to the other room with the beholders, uh, Vasilia looks up again, and she nods and says, okay, she can't see us now. What did you want to tell us before? Yeah. She says, I can show you the Nox. The, the little, the funny little man taught me. All right, go ahead. Yeah, please do. <laughs> and she leans back on her bed so she can reach this wall here. And she says, I, do, I don't want to open the door. I opened it once and it was, it was frightening. I saw terrible things and it was difficult to get back out again. She says, but, and she points over to the door that Terran and the Orphan are now re-emerging through behind the shelves. She says, he taught me the knock went like this. And she knocks that out on the wall next to her. How did you get back through? She says, I, it, I was in a forest, a very mean forest. The trees had eyes and teeth. And she starts, you see, she starts getting a little weepy when she's talking about it. And she says, I just closed my eyes and ran and ran and ran. And I thought about... The forest in, near my village, the old witch woman lives out there, the one who makes our, our medicines and our herbs, and I thought about her little hut, and I thought about her little cottage and, and the door around it, and when I opened my eyes again, it was standing in front of me, and I ran towards the door and opened it, and when I went through, I was back here. The brick road, just one more time, the knocks were, it was two paws, two paws, one pause and then five? No, she went like this. Two, one, five. Okay, so it's one, five, okay. Oh! Okay. That's what the other ones are. Yeah, the pots and the recipe. Yeah. <laughs> she says, what? but... That, that was the last I saw him. He, he used the knocks against the door. He taught me how to use them. And then he went through. She says, I didn't follow him for a couple of hours. And then I was in the mean forest. And she With looked kind of sadly. She says, I don't know what became of him. Uh, Taryn asks, the mean forest with the cat or somewhere else? She says, no, not not Jazzy Baba's room. It was, some, it was different. It looks like the forest... It, she's, you, you see she has a very hard time describing the scenario and she, she says it looked like something out of a dream I had once she says, but the trees looked very different from Jazzy Baba's room it wasn't, she was nowhere to be found hmm okay um and when I asked her, like, what, like, where did she say she, if I, and I forget if I asked how I phrased this before, but I basically was trying to ask, like, where she works, like, what kind of work she does as a servant. And she indicates the spiral staircase and says mm -hmm. that the workrooms are uh, up above her. She says that it's her job to uh, spin wool, uh, sort food and fruits. Uh, she does, washes the clothes, does the laundry. She rattles off the long list of chores that... Bob Yaga has given her. Uh, she says she works very hard, and Bob Yaga so far has been very pleased with her work. And she says, but I've gotten the animals to help me. I don't have to do it all by myself anymore. The uh, stuffed animals we just destroyed, or something else? No, she shakes her head. Says, no, no, the, an the, the animals upstairs. Would they be dangerous if we went up there? She's not if you're kind to them, like I am. We should be fine. Our friend Zook here talks to animals. Are they small animals or big animals? She says, I think they're normal sized. I mean, like, what kind of animals are they? Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> she mentions uh, she has friends upstairs. Some of them are mice. Um, mm -hmm. Some are sparrows. Okay. Uh, she mentions uh, a dog that helps her wash the laundry. Okay. Dogs are better than cats. That's true. Yeah, they are. Is Khalil going up the stairs without us? <laughs> so Khalil's... Might as well be, since you guys seem to have... And Khalil starts walking up the stairs. 
We still got telepathy uh, in case I run into any issues. So what's everybody else Unless doing? Unless you go to a different different plane of existence. Um, and yeah. uh, he's gonna ask the little girl, um, do, will you be okay here if we go? Or she hops like, off the bed and says, "I could take you up if you like." Oh, uh, yeah, you can come upstairs with us. Uh, I think that Thank should you. be safe. As she reaches up, or she reaches over and grabs Zook by the hand and starts running over to the stairway. Aw, girl's adorable. I don't right, trust her. Tall Zook is. I don't trust her. All right, let's go upstairs. Wow, upstairs. rude. Hold on, I need to save this map first. <laughs> in case you guys come back here to fight some more doll golems. <laughs> or not fight them. You know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's all Whatever good. you personally believe in. Orphan's got that combat mode, but she barely ever uses it. She only uses it to kill innocent people. <laughs> she brings you upstairs to what is a. I believe it is a wooden trap door. I'm going to double check that. Fuck. Yeah. She takes you up to a wooden trap door, which she throws open and leads Zook up the stairs into this little room with four. Uh, four more wooden doors leading off to the side. And she indicates that this is where she does her work. And when she messes it, you see pride in her face when she talks about how hard she works here. And I ask her to show me uh, show me around. Uh, you know, she'll show me any of these rooms where, where she does her work. And she asks what you'd like to see. Uh, what's your favorite thing that you do? Kind of going off of her pride. What's your favorite thing? She goes over to this door, the one the orphan is standing next to. Mm -hmm. It opens it up. You look inside, and you see many, many baskets stacked up against the walls of the room. Uh, baskets of grain, sunflower seeds, berries, little fruits, things like that. And you see sparrows flying around the ceiling of the room, swooping down into the baskets, uh, picking up grains uh, and berries and dropping them, sorting them all out, um, making sure that there are no pebbles uh, and shells in the seeds, twigs, and the berries. And Vasilius says, I like sorting... The grain and the berries. Uh, is there any reaction from the sparrows when we come in, or they just keep doing their work? No, they continue to work. Um, I asked the little girl, do, when, when, do the, does she just speak to the, uh, to the birds like normal, like common? And she looks up at the sparrows, and she starts whistling. And as she does, one of them swoops down and lands on the ground and hops forward. And she swoops down, and she and the sparrow converse using whistles. Um, with my speak with small creatures, do I more or less understand, like, what they're saying to each other? Yes. I don't really know. Vasilia okay. is, uh, you can't understand what Vasilia is saying, because she doesn't count as a small creature. Right. But the bird is responding, uh, oh, okay, I see, these are friends of yours, we shouldn't be scared of them. And I will, uh, kneel down and, uh, basically introduce myself to the sparrow and say, hello, it's very nice to meet you. <laughs> And the sparrow responds in kind, and when Vasilia witnesses this, sees that you're conversing with the sparrow, she gets very happy and claps. I had a feeling she would. Elda looks over at Orphan, it's like, this is nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Orphan shakes says no more or lesser than anything else you've seen. Does and Orphan ask... understand this? No. Okay. No. No, but... on language, okay. Th yeah. Um, and then I'll ask her, um, after they're done talking, uh, to show me, uh, the next room. And she says this this room is her least favorite. Because there's, noth there's nothing fun to do in here. And she takes oh. into room number five here, and it's just a huge, huge closet. A huge variety of cleaning aids, brooms, mops, buckets, scrub brushes, a wider variety of what she has stored on her shelves downstairs. Um, powdered soaps, jars of polish, all stacked up on shelves and on tables throughout this room. What animals in here? None. No animals in here? Yeah, nobody's in here. It's lit with torchlight against one of the walls. Um, she says she doesn't like this room because there's nothing fun to do. She says she has to keep it in order and make sure that all of the uh, buckets and brooms are returned when she's done using them, or else she gets in trouble. But this is also... this is There's laundry in here? Is that what you said? No. Oh, okay. Never mind. I misunderstood you. Just oh, I saw you're like you. You're, you're, you're looking stuff. at the dirty linen that's indicated in the yeah. next room over. <laughs> okay, well, let's go look at the dirty linen then. I say, well, that uh, this room doesn't seem like very much fun at all. I can understand why you don't like it. <laughs> and she takes you over to the next door here. And you look into this room. She has a big pile of dirty linen stacked up along one wall. Uh, 
two tubs of water, clothesline where the clothes are hung out to dry. Um, one of the tubs is steaming with heat and has it's very soapy. And you see a dog standing up on its hind legs, uh, <laughs> scrubbing linen at the at the tub, moving it over, submerging it in the cold tub, and then working back. Oh, who's a good boy? <laughs> Um, and I ask her, um, are all these clothes Baba Yaga's, or does she have other people with that require linen? <laughs> she said she washes Baba Yaga's clothes, uh, and any guests who are staying with her. She takes care of their linens as well. Okay. Does, How do the uh, linens get here? Magically. She says <laughs> the, uh, they show up in a pile here. Every day when she comes up, there's a big pile, and she gets them all laid out on the line. After that, she folds them all and places them back, and the next day, there's another pile. How has Jazzy Baba not killed that dog yet? Eric asks that. Yeah. <laughs> and Vasilia turns around, and you see the very sour look on her face at the mention of Jazzy Baba. She says, I don't, I don't let any of my friends go near Jazzy Baba. She says, I never would. I never would. And I'll ask her... How do, were all these animals here when you came here, or where did they come from? Yeah, she says they were. These are some of Baba Yaga's pets. Oh, okay. But she's she's far nicer to them than Baba Yaga is, so they agreed to help her with her uh, her chores. If I uh, try to say something to the dog, does it does it acknowledge me? What do you say? Just I basically. My name is Zook. I'm a friend of uh, what's her name again? Vasilia. Nope. Vasilia. And the dog barks back that if you're a friend of Vasilia, you are a friend of his. Will he, let me, claps. <laughs> will he let me scratch him under the chin? <laughs> he does. That's a good boy. You can see okay. he's, he, he's not an enchanted or magical dog. He's having difficulty balancing on his high legs. <laughs> so sad. That is adorable. Okay. <laughs> and the next room? And in the last room, you can look over here, and it has a spinning wheel in it. Oops, wrong page. Yeah, it has two large looms in the two corners of the room, a spinning wheel in the center, uh, and bags of wool stacked up in the, in the corner. And you see mice, dozens of them, scattering back and forth um, with brightly colored threads in their mouths, uh, setting up the looms. Um, act Several of them working in conjunction to work those looms and spin all the wool. Alright, out of character? Yeah. I really do enjoy this Disney movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look over at Vasily and she says, Let it go! Let it go! <laughs> Jeez, you're not even drunk, Brick. I know. <laughs> just, oh, no, just, just incredibly sweet tea is all I have to drink. Uh, does she say any, what does she say about this room? Does she enjoy this room? She says she doesn't particularly like weaving, but it's her job. So she says, thankfully, the mice help me because uh, she feeds them better than Baba Yaga does. She says, I, I, I managed to fetch fresh bread from the kitchen and bring it to them sometimes and give them the crumbs. And where's the kitchen? Oh, go ahead. Now, where's the kitchen? Um, hold on. And I will answer that for you in a second. But seriously, how, is, how has Jazzy Baba not just come in here and slaughtered everything? That's not to her, just a general comment. I have to actually look because to see how she would get to the kitchen from here. We should take out that cat. She'd have to go through the pool room <laughs> and then open a door. There's a regular door between her and here. And then... Yes. The cat has and then also stuffed the animals. Also stuffed animals that were horrible. Yeah, but... I mean, well, the we cat could, can't she open would, She would essentially have to go back the path that you guys took to get here, where she has to go through the the, uh, the observatory, and she has to go through the reception hall. She has to activate uh, the globe and do all that mess. It's, it, the kitchen's is a... She has to she has to actually get in and ride the dumbwaiter down to get to the kitchen. Yeah, and it's a, oh, but she, do, and it's she a does long that, though? Here. Wait, how did... Let me, let me be... I didn't find... A, I don't remember there being a way from the observatory back to the stairway. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, how, that's how what, she tells you that she goes. What, how do you what, get back you, from the inverter to the stairway? Yeah, after you leave the globe, where do you go next? And she looks at you, looks back and forth. She says, "What do you mean you 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 don't know?" No, yeah, that's why I'm asking. We've only been this way. 
She says, oh, well, if you... And she describes the balloons in the corner and says that if you mm-hmm. cut one of the paper ribbons and hold on to it tight, it'll lift you up through back into the, into the spiral staircase. Held of size. That's... <laughs> That's preposterous. And when she says it, she says it like it's 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 fun for her. It's a fun experience. Oh <laughs> my god! What are there more balloons? Orphan really wants to go do this. Now. Hey, Orphan said what? Oh, she didn't say anything. Uh, she, she just really wants to go do this now. Okay. <laughs> are there more balloons every time you go there? No matter how many you cut. She nods. She says they reappear. She, she no, of course they do. She doesn't know who puts them there. Um, and I'll ask her, when you go up the balloon route, do you know what's at the top of those icy stairs? She says, I've never gone up them. I was told not to. They, yeah, in, in any they... case, I, I, they, they're too dangerous to climb. I'm afraid I would slip and fall. Cause remember, those stairs were covered in ice. Yeah, they yeah. were covered in ice. And then after going up them, I ended up mis- magically aged. I don't know if that's connected yet or not. <laughs> You magically age when you were talking to Baba Yaga. Yeah. Yeah. During the, I don't know why. the discussion in the reception room. I still don't know why. Do you ask Vasilia? Do you see you mention it? Um I'm out of character, I'm not really sure why I would have brought it up, other than why I was just thinking about it going up those stairs. Okay. But no, yeah, she describes cutting one of the balloons and holding onto it very tight with both hands, and the balloon lifts her up through the ceiling and back into the stairway in the reception hall. I'll ask her if she knows, like, how much those balloons can lift. Is it just a little girl, or can it lift a full person? More than one person? She looks around, and she focuses on Eric, because he's a big guy wearing really heavy armor. She says, well, there are three balloons. You might be able to hold all of them at once. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Eric shrugs. Haha, <laughs> you're fat. <laughs> Um, and Zeke's gonna do the normal thing. He's gonna introduce himself to the mice, tell him he's a friend of Vasilia. Okay. And the mice line up in two little rows, very politely, and bow to you as you enter. Oh, I was gonna ask if they bowed! (laughs) Um, and Zeke's gonna ask, uh, uh, whoever the nearest, uh, Meiji Eye Guy, uh, if any of this stuff in here is magical. (laughs) Meiji Eye Guy. Who are you asking? And in what room? Meiji. Meiji Eye Guy. Um, really, he'd like to kind of know for each room, uh, like, just have, just a quick survey. Since Khalil's near the laundry room, he'll, he'll take a sweep, he'll sweep over the, uh... Oh, we sweep over the room, it's all magical. You get the residual magic from the hut. I was thinking more specifically, like, the products, like, maybe not so much the dirty laundry, but the grain itself and the looming itself. Um, tubs? Uh, looking at the tubs, both of the actual tubs, the tubs themselves, not necessarily the water inside, but yes, both of them are highly magical. Okay. I imagine to regulate temperature. Probably. And then what? Um, I'm going to ask her, uh, just while, while Khalil's walking around looking through his magic eye, um, mm-hmm. if there's any way out of this ru- out of this area, other than down back down the stairs, that she's aware of. All right, give me one second. I will find okay. that out for you. <laughs> hey, guys, if we're going to... Yeah, if we have to go, since we're going to have to go back to that observatory, we're going to go up. Ah, ah. What? Oh. <laughs> now I do want to tie this balloons to one of uh, uh, Eldov's little huts. <laughs> um, no, she says she doesn't know of any way... Um, she, always, she always comes up and down the stairs. She says that there are other places in the hut that Baba Yaga has her clean from time to time. But when she has to, she always receives special instructions to do so, and Baba Yaga always accompanies her to those areas. She says that Baba Yaga makes her close her eyes, and that she puts her hands on each of her shoulders. And when she opens her eyes, she's in a new room. 
And then Baba Yaga instructs her not to touch any of the doors in that room until she's done cleaning. And once she's done, Baba Yaga comes back and retrieves her. So she's not allowed to walk around openly. Sounds like Baba Yaga teleports her around. So she knows Baba how to get Yaga here, and she, kno she's, she knows that... And I asked her, did Baba Yaga to show her how to get to the kitchen, or is that something you figured out on your own? Um, she has some chores that she does in the kitchen from time to time. It's her job to uh, bake the bread. It's her job to prepare the meat, this kind of stuff. But, but again, Baba Yaga used to bring her in once a day, and... She would do her chores, then when she was done, Bobby Yaga would come and retrieve her. That went on for a couple of months, maybe two or three months, and Bobby Yaga one day reward, or praised her for the good work that she was doing, the, the good and diligent job she was doing with all of her chores, and the little girl asked if she would be taught the way to come to and from the kitchen on her own. And she said, well, I, I, I asked her because I thought it would reduce the amount of work she had to do. She would no longer have to come and fetch me. And she said Baba Yaga uh, rewarded her for her diligence by showing her the way to go. So it was okay. a reward for good service. So now she can get to the kitchen whenever she wants. Okay. Really sounds like Baba Yaga needs her own cube. <laughs> <laughs> um, we all need our own cube. It's true. It's true. And, and she had said that she had one more year left on her contract, basically, to be a servant to her? Yeah, she says if she serves uh, diligently and serves well for two full years and doesn't make any mistakes, that Baba Yaga will reward her family and return her home. That was, that okay. was that's, that's the contract that her family entered her into. And Has I'll anyone ask... else ever worked for Baba Yaga? And that question, she... Doesn't answer. She just looks at the ground and starts shuffling her feet a little bit. She does not want to answer. Um, and I ask her, you know, is what happened with uh, the stuffed animals going to get her in trouble, or? She says, "No, not me. I didn't do anything." <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I like this kid. Um, and we and she already said she doesn't know how to get to the guest rooms, right? And I think we asked her that already. She says she's cleaned them before. But, but again, Bobby Yala okay. teleported her in. She says there's four of them. And it actually took a long time because she got teleported into one. And there was slime coating all of the walls. It took her hours to scrub it all down. Um, <laughs> and then Bobby Yaga came and retrieved her and took her to the second one. And she cleaned that one. And she took her to the third one. And part of the bed in that room required mending. And she had to sit down and... Uh, so for hours to get it repaired and then she got teleported in the fourth one and she remembers being so exhausted at the end of that day when Bobby Upper brought her back she also says there's a much larger bedroom that she was asked to clean twice in the one year that she's been here both times she was taken there it was absolutely filthy and she doesn't know whose it is probably Bobby Yaga's <laughs> um guys do we want to go try uh, knocking on stuff? Or do we think we're done here? I think we're done here. Yeah. yeah. I think we're done here, yeah. Do Thank we just... Time, I'll ask girl. the girl. Are we supposed to... Did, did the gnome say whether or not you were supposed to just knock on your door? or? He says he... Are there other doors? He knocked on the door behind her shelves and walked through. And he, she doesn't have any idea what happened to him after that. The only reason I'm asking that is because it seems kind of weird. Like, that works for that knock, but I wonder then if we have to use the other two knocks in the rooms where we found them. That would be my guess, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Also, what room did we find that recipe for cookies or whatever? It was, that the was in the room. The waiter at the top. Yeah. Okay, mm. so we might want to head back to the observatory? Uh, was that, I would, not the observatory, the the plant room. Uh, we, yeah, we still have the plant room portal to explore. Oh so yeah, before we start knocking on shit. You're gonna go back to well. the conservatory? Yeah. Yeah. Bear with me one moment so I can get my conservatory up on screen here. Okay. So, what do you tell Vasilia before you leave? Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you, and... I don't know, just ask her if she has any, like, um, 
she, if there's anything else she knows about by, about this place that would be helpful. I mean, she's already been really helpful, so. She doesn't know about a whole lot about the uh, hut beyond the rooms she's allowed into. But she says if you come across the funny little man, if you find him, uh, she wants to know he's okay. 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 We'll we keep that in mind. Him, we'll let you know. So you guys go back to the conservatory. You probably know better than I do at this point the path you take to get there. <laughs> yeah, we go back through the stuffed animal door, and then we go through the door in the pillar, and then we go through the uh, cat room. I don't remember. We what say what we want to go to the conservatory, and then you load up the conservatory. <laughs> I don't remember what the exit to the cat room to the conservatory. It might just be a door. Yeah, it is. It's just a door, and then we're in the conservatory. Go to the conservatory. Okay. So yeah, you guys walk back. And you walk back through Jazzy Baba's forest again, and she's nowhere to be seen. Just as well. Through that cat. No, don't. So here we are in the conservatory. You guys come through and enter. Once again, you have the, the dirt floors, uh, the severed hands crawling amongst, with the green thumbs crawling amongst the plants in the center chamber. I fucking hate this place. So we just <laughs> want to try the regular door first? Yeah, the regular door I opened and expecting to be blown out into the vacuum of space or be killed by all sorts of venomous atmospheric conditions, but it just leads to another portal. Sort of disappointing, honestly. So you're going through the door up in room number two there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if I remember right, we came through, through we entered this place yeah. in Jazzy Baba's room. Yes. Yeah. And five is locked. <laughs> Before we go any further, is is there anything we can do to, to make the kid have be in communication with us? No. No, anything we do breaks when we cross planes, which we do like going from her room to the goddamn bathroom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. We're leaving that kid to die. Have fun. Pretty much. Open the door and step did, through. Did you say you wanted to murder the kid? Yeah. <laughs> Step into the I still room, don't trust her anyway. And darkness all around you. You can't see an inch in front of your face. Can Taryn uh, see anything? Taryn can see nothing. Hmm. Can Kelly see something? Nobody can see anything. Eric? The room is uh, utterly dark. Um, do I hear anything? You, yeah, you guys hear lots of stuff, but I'm going to wait till I get to that part of the description. Okay. okay. Uh, Eric, you were carrying a lit... Part of your staff was lit, right? You cast a light yeah. cantrip. Yeah. As soon as you step through the door, the light is extinguished. The magic just dissipates into the air. Um, and there's nothing. Oh, there's absolutely weird. nothing. What you hear are loud roars uh, and crashing sounds. The sound of very heavy implements striking stone, cracking, breaking, scattering across the ground. Um, I want everybody to throw me a percentile die. Percentile? Okay. What? That's 2d10s, right? 2d10. Yeah. Pick which one's 10 and which one's 1s. Meanwhile, there's a pile up for everybody getting the, uh, <laughs> yeah. getting the yeah. dice. The, uh, the metal one is the 10s 10. Just notate the numbers and I'll ask for them. Left is 10s for me. Pink is 10s. Red. My, my red is my 10s. No, oh, that did not actually roll. Come on. And these things still roll like shit. Yeah. Yeah, the physics got all borked. Physics be borked. <laughs> Alright, so... What did the orphan roll? Uh, 46. 46? What did... Eric roll. 86. And Khalil? 47. Zook? 18. And Taren? Uh, 16. And Eldov? Also 16. Alright. So yes, you... Absolutely, absolute darkness. You can't see a foot in front of your face and you hear uh, crazed roars uh some kind of monstrous creature. Impossible to tell precisely what. Um, he's not, artic not articulating anything. It's not words. Just screams. Just cries of battle. 
So I have blind sense, but it's only within 10 feet, and all it says is if I hear something, I can know its location. A lot of echoing is happening here. Um, okay. But yeah, because it's more than 10 feet away from you, you can't tell where it is. What happens when I go to cast my light cantrip again? You're used to when you stand using this cantrip in the past. You're used to when you stand in the middle of uh, magical darkness. Or, or any kind of darkness, really. When you stand there and cast a light cantrip, the light tends to banish it. Um, the power of Osprim flows through you into your staff. And this time all you get is a fishy odor. So what that indicates to you is that the light is there and shining. But then after a few seconds, it dissipates again. All right. But you didn't Here's see anything. There was no flash, no color. I'm going to hold up my hand in front of me. Okay. I'm going to take one step away from... Alright, so I'm going to take one step away from where I walked in. Okay. Uh, do we still have a mind link up, Eldo? One hour, so yes. Yeah, unless he, unless he dropped it. Eldo, do you still have detect thoughts open? Uh, probably not. Let me check out the length of that. Let no, definitely just, not. Just for, just for my own edification, let me cycle through everybody's, uh, everybody's sight with my eye that I have. Me, darkness, is... darkness, darkness, darkness. Okay, that's what that's what I figured. I just wanted Aaron to, is sure. to say, let's step out of the darkness and come up with a plan before we go back. And he's going to walk backwards towards where the door was. Okay. And you press up against the wood of the door. I'm sorry, it's not wood. Hold on. Maybe it is. I have to double check. No, when you back up and press against the door, uh, you expect it to, because it was glass on the other side, as I recall. You expect it to feel like glass, but instead it feels like metal. Do I try, I'll try the push and release and see if the door opens? No, it's solid. It does not open. No door. No, I mean, feeling uh, around for a else. second, feeling around for a second, you find the handle in the door. The door can be oh, open. Okay. I'm just describing oh. the material to you. When you expect to feel glass behind you, or wood like the rest of the doors in the place, instead you feel metal. Okay, then and I'll open, I'll try opening the door. Okay. Yeah, you take the handle, and you manage to open it up. And step through. And you step through back into the conservatory. Alright, so I'd say that once we step through, one of us should go and follow the wall. Alright. So does everyone else come back into the conservatory? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Alright, so here's, here's what I'm thinking. Um, Orphan, you should uh -huh. rope Zook, because Zook, you are not totally helpless in darkness, right? Yeah, and Rick Road, let me reread the, this is the actual description. It doesn't say I have to hear the creature, it just says if I am able to hear, I'm aware of the location of any creature within 10 feet. Yeah, I know. That's how, okay. blind, that's how blind sense works. Okay. So, I would think we could rope Zook. Zook could explore, and the rest of us could follow behind, like, 20 feet with uh, holding hands, so that we don't lose each other. And then maybe, I don't know, like, run the rope back into this room so we don't get too lost. Like, and if we right reach the end of it after 100 feet, we can just come back. I'm a little concerned about groping around in the darkness when there's horrible smashing monster noises happening. You have a better idea? Do don't go this to, way for now. Do you want me to attempt to shoot a firebolt into the air just to see if that casts any light? You can I mean, We can try it. I don't, I don't. Call me spe skeptical, buddy. Well, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, what can it hurt? Has anyone tried just lighting a torch to see if non-magical light works? I don't. I can normally see in magical darkness, so I don't really know. <laughs> that doesn't register, Terry. I can cast true seeing. What does that do? That's pretty big. Um, it is a very big spell that I can cast. That I have prepared it. Uh, the spell gives the willing creature you touch the ability to see things as they actually are. What if for it actually is darkness, though? For the duration, the creature has true sight, notice the secret doors hidden by magic, and can see into the ethereal plane, all out to a range of 120 feet. Yep. Um, why don't we try the torch first, because my hunch is that magic is suppressed in this room. And so anything that allows us to see... Well, I take that back, because my dark vision is not magical, it's just I'm a gnome. Yep. So Same here. Scratch that idea. Or it could just be light is, like, magical light is suppressed. And magical vision. Mm. I mean, I already have magical. I have three types of magical vision that aren't working in there. So, well, uh, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna light. Let's a torch just try everything. Yeah, yeah. Let's light the yeah. torch. First. <laughs> so who's so lighting Zook a torch? Zook lights, Zook lights a torch. Zook lights a torch and walks in. 
and walks just just through the door and that's it. Yeah, just yeah, walks and through. I soon, through. Just pokes his head as soon through. as you walk through the door, you hear the sound of the torch being snuffed. Pew, goes out. Okay, that's creepy. I go back. And All right. Zoo comes walking back in and he's holding an extinguished torch. I head in with uh, while uh, Zook is in there, and I say, "Zook, hold up one second. And uh, I, I feel around above the the door a bit and lift Zook up there to make sure that there's a wall there. There is. Is there in a fact, wall you feel the, the You feel the metal of the door, and then when you get to uh, about eight feet up at the top of the door, you start feeling very crumbly stone. Um, and feeling around, you, you can start feeling the cracks in between the bricks of the stone masonry of the walls. Okay. All right. I then aim at a, a point like a little northwest of the the top of the door, like just okay. to the left and above it. Gotcha. And I shoot a fireball. And you hear it go off. You feel the magic come out of your body, and you hear the crash of the fireball against the stone. And when you hear it, the cries are from the main room. Instead of cries of battle, you hear one of surprise, a <laughs> roar of surprise. Then you hear very pounding footsteps coming in your direction five or six of them in a row and then you hear another cry and then a very loud crash on the ground <laughs> Eldos is okay and uh, heads back through the door so everybody's yeah. back in the conservatory yeah. was, was, Zook, was Zook in the room when that happened? yeah Yes. did, did any of that set off his blind sense? no nothing got within 10 feet of me it sounds like so then Eldov explains everything that just happened. Where did you hear all that coming from? The off. <laughs> he kind of points vaguely into towards <laughs> darkness. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't have a better idea than the uh, groping our way. I mean, you might not actually need to grope your way with uh, blind sense, would you? Well, all it does is tells me the location of creatures okay. when they get within 10 feet of me. It doesn't tell me what they are, I don't see them, I well, just literally... Point, it doesn't tell you, like, where walls are. The, the purpose of blind sense is to allow you to attack creatures you can't see without disadvantage. Creatures like gel gelatinous cubes and things all have blind sense for that reason. So a gelatinous cube can't see you, but it doesn't roll disadvantage against you because it's got blind sense. It's a way to circumvent the disadvantage you get from attacking blind. Right. It's not so much for walking around in the dark. Right. Now, if you want me to go in there and stab something, <laughs> but... <laughs> we might get to that. Well, again, I don't have a better Sounds idea Sounds like there may be several things you can I think, I think our current best idea, because we know that that thing can't reach us, whatever it is, is to go in there and have Orphan try to talk to it. Yeah. Okay. That, that might be shot. a good idea. <laughs> All right, so Orphan will go inside. And I'll head in with Orphan. So who uh, will go as well. Is anybody not coming? I'm going in. Uh, okay. oh, McDowell is not on the call, it looks like. That's weird. Well, he knows where we are when he comes back. Uh, oh, wait, hold on. He sent me a message real quick. Maybe his internet went out. No, because he sent <laughs> no, a thing on something. Mumble. Yeah, he just said he got dropped from Mumble, so he'll be back. Alright. All right. So he's going to restart, he says. That's fine. So, is any, so anybody's not going in. Everybody's going back in the room? Everyone's yeah. going. Yeah. And you hear now <laughs> you cries of, of of pain when you walk in, like some someone has injured themselves. But the, the crashing I'll, I'll, for the moment has stopped. I'll, I'll call out, hello? Can anyone hear me? And a, you hear a roar in response, a loud, not, not words, not anything intelligible, but then you hear more sounds of movement and shuffling, like something big is getting to its feet. And then again, the cries and the crashing be resume. If if you can hear me, say something. And the footsteps start moving in your direction. And someone emanates a battle cry. Does it sound like more than one creature coming at us? Uh, it's hard, difficult to tell. Make a perception check. Alright, I'm pretty good at those. Dice rolls. Um, Pay an average. That, that twelve becomes uh, nineteen plus five is twenty-four. 
Okay. Uh, you have you have to focus for a minute. Let your ears attune to the echoing of the chamber. At first, it sounded like the room was filled with something, some kind of creatures. But listening for a moment, no, it's just one very big creature. Zook relays that. Sounds like one large creature to me. Sounds like Baba Yaga might have something chained up down here. I hope it's chained up. <laughs> that might be what the crash was. And then, Terran... Actually, you all would be able to see this. And then, after another moment or two, the darkness dissipates. Yeah. You all are standing in this tiny room over here. <laughs> the room is still very, very dark. Uh, but... After a moment, a fire in the far corner of the room up here bursts into flames. A huge bonfire. So you can see the illumination from here. All along the walls, up and down, are these stone pillars. And throughout the room, many of these have been crushed. Many of these have been smashed down. Uh, only a few are still standing. The debris is laying all through the field of the room. And in the center of the room... About right here that was stomping towards you is a cyclops, a giant with one huge eye in the middle of his face wearing very ragged furs and dragging a huge uh, stone club behind him and when, he s when the room illuminates he spins back around and he sees the fire burst open uh, let me check Aaron's, Eric's passive perception probably Zook's too actually Khalil's probably the only one who'll see it <laughs> But he's not here, is he? Uh, I don't think he's made it back yet. He's not. Okay. Oh, he I'm just back now. In. Khalil. Oh, yeah. Good timing. Uh, the darkness in the room dissipated. And a huge okay. bonfire okay. burst into flames in the corner of the room here. Whoa. Everybody noticed the darkness subsided first. Uh, Terry, okay. actually, no. Everybody with dark vision <laughs> noticed it first. The darkness subsided first first and then a few moments later the fire burst up if you don't have dark vision or don't have it activated it just looks to you like the fire illuminated the room uh you see the giant cyclops that was coming towards you uh, but as soon as the fire burst open he spun around surprised to look at it he's dragging this giant stone club behind him khalil oh, yeah in the instant well let me ask this which of your eyeballs did you have turned on um dark vision okay then in the split second after the darkness vanished, you caught the sight of a horse's hoof going through this wall, traveling through oh. the stone of the wall, just Which for wall? a because second. Which wall? Because I haven't reconnected the tabletop this one. yet. I'm trying to. Oh. Uh, it's <laughs> forward and across from you. You're standing in a <laughs> very tiny room. Side of the pool. You're standing in a tiny room that adjoins a much larger room with a pool and the bonfire and the cyclops. All the way across from you, across the pool, is another small room with a door at it. To that the right of that doorway you saw the hoof disappear into the wall you also see all of you a very faint glow faint red glow coming off of this door here and that's the scene does we'll the check. cyclops appear to be chained or restrained in any way or is it just coming at us no he is not restrained in any way he's also not coming at you now he's moving back to the back to the fire um he's also no longer crying no longer hollering out and swinging his club wildly is we, oh, oh, good. Uh, did, I'm sorry, I missed. Did Orphan actually get a chance to say anything or not? She called out, "Hello, if you can hear me." Okay, but didn't get a response. What's in the pool? Uh, you can't tell from where you are. Oh, I don't know if I want to go next to the pool. <laughs> Let's go next to the pool. Come on. <laughs> you can't first. Can't be anything bad the pool. And the Cyclops yeah. goes over to the fire. And hunches, hunter, uh, hunches down by it. Starts prodding it with a makeshift poker. Does it look like he's trying to tend it to keep it burning or trying to smother it? Uh, he's definitely not trying to smother it. Okay. And Zeke's uh, going to say over the mine link, remember this this room snuffed my flame before, so he might be happy there's fire again. Yeah. Should we just walk around him or try and introduce ourselves? Over the mine link. Um, well, okay, we didn't I'll, say anything before when we said hello. Yeah, so I'll move about halfway across the room, and I'll say, everyone else get to the other door, and I'll try talking to them. Alright. I'll head over to the okay. other door. 
When you step into this little room here, uh, it's very warm. Uncomfortably warm. And the heat gets more and more intense as you get closer to the door. Oh, I think I know what's on the other side of this door, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> and I don't think I want to open it. Eldev, that's all you. In fact, Zook's gonna step back into this corner. Okay. I'm only resistant to fire, I'm not... Khalil. Immune to fire. Yeah. The hoof you saw disappear into the wall was right here. Right there? Yeah, you All saw right. it from this doorway back here. Alright, I'm going to run my hand along the wall of where the hoof was. Do you tell any of us, hey, I saw a freaking horse go through this wall? Not yet. Giant, okay. giant stone bricks. Eldov will, however, go, Khalil, what are you looking at? I saw something go through this wall. It looked like a hoof of some kind. Be right back. Uh, Terran. Yeah. An orphan. As you approach the Cyclops, you see he's poking the fire, alternately poking the fire, and like rubbing and massaging his temples. And as you get within about 20 feet of him, you hear him muttering very lowly to himself. You can't make out what he's saying. Khalil, did it look uh, like a quasi-real horse-like creature? I'll, I'll get a little closer to I can, so I can hopefully understand him. Okay. It I'm didn't gonna... sound like your preposterousness, no. As you I'm get... gonna investigate this wall. As you get closer to her, okay, go ahead and roll investigation. As you get closer, uh, he's not muttering particularly coherently, but he's saying things like, uh, uh, he, he's stuck here, he, he, none, none of the walls can be broken, uh, the Black Knight continues to come back. If only he had more fuel for the fire, and he, if only he could stop his head from pounding. If only he could squash, squash the witch into jelly. And he's muttering these things repeatedly to himself. I'll, I'll say, um, sorry, it sounds like you're having some problems. And he <laughs> reached back with his arm. He's got one arm on the on one hand with the poker poking the fire. Without looking, he reaches back and starts swiping wildly at the air behind you. No bad people! Go away! Go away! Is he saying this in a language that anyone else can understand, or just... No, uh, only Orphan can understand him. Okay. The rest of you guys just hear uh, some kind of strange, very primitive language. Zook, what was that yeah. investigation roll? Uh, I got an 18. You find a pillar back in this corner. Neat. Hey guys, I found a pillar in this corner. Does it sound like... If only we had some sort of uh, legal investigative type person. <laughs> and after he swipes you, he goes back to holding his uh, forehead in his hand and continues to tend the fire. Tell me about this pool. Is it just a pool of water? Filled with water. Does it appear to be clean water, drinking water, or is he pooping in it? No, it looks clean enough from here, but it doesn't look particularly deep. Maybe only a foot or two. Maybe it's a giant's pool. I don't know what the fuck you would use. I mean, Orphan, if you don't want to open the door, I'm all for it. I would say oh, it's for it. drinking water, but he doesn't have any food either, so... Well, oh, it doesn't look like... Yeah. It doesn't look like he's necessarily been in this room very long. Why oh, makes true. you think that? Because some of the pillars are still standing? <laughs> That's true. Duke's gonna circle the room so he can get a little bit better look at the fire. Okay. Does it appear to just be a normal-ass fire? Roll a perception check. Okay. Orphan, did you communicate what he said over the mine line? Oh, no, I probably didn't yet. Okay. Uh, that'll be... 22 in perception. Just looks like a big bonfire. Um, I mean, to your eyes, it looks like a roaring fire. I mean, it looks like... If, if, you, if this was your campfire, you'd be a little... Like, hey, man, what do we do to the fire? We need to rain in a little bit. But the way that the giant is tending it, he like it looks like he's afraid it's about to go out. Does it look small? Next to the to fire. Him? Oh, sorry. Next to the fire, there are charcoal marks laying on the floor, uh, in front of you, like on the floor in front of it. And I'm going to draw them out up here. They look they're just hash marks on the floor. They look like this. Drawn crudely Three, in charcoal on the floor in front of the fire. Five. Three, five, four. So that's another knock thing, probably. I'm gonna communicate Hopefully it's that not for the burning hot door. Well, I communicate that over the wide link almost immediately now that I'm looking for patterns of three numbers. 
No. And also some... response. Hopefully, it's not for the burning hot door. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do I see any other fuel sources in this room? Like, I'm trying to figure out what how he's feeding this fire. Uh, he's just poking it with a poker right now. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and I'll ask uh, just as a matter of course, because I do love doing this. Is that fire magical? Um, I don't know. No more magical than the background radiation from the hut. But, but it's not dragon fire or anything crazy like that. You would know. You, you would know. A, you would know regular fire from dragon fire. I'm asking the group at this point. Sorry, <laughs> if I'm asking you, the, if I'm asking you, I'm asking through someone. No, you got to ask who you're asking. Eldov, is that dragon fire? Eldov looks at it. From back here, it looks like a regular bonfire. I don't think so. Maybe we should get him some dragon fire. <laughs> Is there any rubble in this room? Any There's probably some behind this door. You want a lot to of these pillars have been broken down and destroyed. It looks like he's been smashing them with his club, so the whole room is filled up with debris. All right, so I will pick up a uh, pick up a fifth-sized uh, chunk of rock. Okay. Drop it in the pool. And you do. And now there's a rock in the foot in the pool. Okay. Man, if only Taren was still thirsty. <laughs> In the pool. And what's next? All right, I'll, I'll reach down and uh, actually touch the pool with my hand now. Okay. That was a bad idea. Roll all the saving throws. All right. All the saving throws. Every saving throws. Oh, no! I rolled a 11. No, your hand gets wet when you stick it in the water. Aw. Save for wetness. wetness. <laughs> um, drink it, drink it, drink it. Seriously, though, can we, uh, is there a new safe way to open this door? Yeah, there's a handle on it. It's a metal door with a metal handle. Do you, when you guys want to mage hand it from a safe distance? I mean, I'll give it a try. Is 20 pounds enough if me and Taryn work together? Oh, yeah, that's more than enough to open the door. I mean, right. I don't want to say, you can open it with just your hand, so you can mage hand it open. Okay. okay. Right. Reach out and grab the door and open it up and can't see through it. But there's the heat. But there's still not super like intense. fire. No, no fire leaps out. It doesn't intensify. It just feels uh, uncomfortably warm in that room. Like you... I tell you what, guys, I'm not gonna go through that door. Well, give me, give me a rope and a torch. I don't recommend you go through that door. I'm not going through the door, although. <laughs> okay. I see where this is going. I hand him the rope and the torch. Okay. I tie the rope to the torch and I throw it through the door. Okay. And then what? <laughs> And then after about four seconds, I pull it back. You pull it back, and the rope is singed at the end, and there's no torch. You've lost Sounds about like a, a plan. Lost about a foot of your rope. <laughs> and the door closes. Yeah. All okay, right. so we're pretty sure we know how to get into this room and back out of it. Do we want to tr try this knocking business? Or do you want to try talking to the Cyclops? Has, does he said anything, Orphan? Uh, no. He keeps, he keeps uh, muttering something about uh, a black knight and keeping the fire lit and a bunch of strange things. Anything about the pool? Did say anything about the pool that I heard. How about we just don't touch the pool? Oh, Khalil How about already we touched just the do pool. that? How about we don't touch the pool since we've already lost Khalil? <laughs> So what do you mean you've lost me. <laughs> do you want to try this knock business on the fire door? We can mage hand knock it. Yeah, sure. Why not? And then we can. It's like a spell it knock, only it's not the spell knock. Yes. Very good. Wow. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll. Let's let's give it a try. I'll knock on the door three times, then five times, then four times. No, that, that, that's door. not good enough. Let's hear the knocks. <laughs> All right, these are magic knocks, though, so they're slightly reverberating. Okay. <laughs> and then I may hand open the door. And, again, you can't see through it. Is it still hot? The room is still uncomfortably warm, and the metal of the door is still glowing faintly red. I, um, I the hold the door open Okay. For, for a minute. Does the door start, start getting cooler? It does not. All right, I recommend we don't go through that door. Can we do the torchy, ropey thing again, just to be double sure? Sure. That's a good idea. I'll 
throw another, I'll tie another torch onto the singed edge of the rope and throw it through. And you throw it through? And then after four seconds, I will reel it back in. Pull it back in again. The rope has been singed off in the end. You would assume it was burned up on the other side of the door. All right, let's not go through that door. All right, let's try <laughs> knocking on the other door. Yeah, and I'll uh, I'll head over to this door, and let's let's do a control test. First, I'll try it with Mage Hand, and then we'll try it with a, re a real hand, and we'll see if maybe just Mage Hand doesn't work. So oh, I'll I'll close the door, Mage Hand, knock it. Okay. Open it up. And can't see through it. And I'll stick my head through. Stick your head through. Now you can see through it. Give me one moment. Huh. It wow. worked! This looks different. Fascinating. Hold on one second. All right, I pull my head back through the door, so load up the other map. Well, hold on, I, might, I, I may have loaded the wrong map. I don't think I did, though. But I'm going to double check. This is where you have to bear with me. This is where it gets real confusing on my end. We give up, but yeah. Well, at least we figured out one thing. Mage Hand totally works. <laughs> so there must just be... Yeah, we must just only be able to use that knock on a specific Oh, wait, door. you were Mage Handing? I thought you were regular handing first. No, Mage Hand Oh, first. then you don't see shit. <laughs> okay, okay, regular hand. <laughs> then we regular hand. Sorry about that. I, was, I, I thought you were doing the regular hand first. Uh, yeah, give me just one second. Alright, so we figure out... Mage Hand totally doesn't work. <laughs> so we still don't know whether or not we can only use it on um, one door per room. I think I may have stumbled upon an error in the module, actually. That is bizarre. Uh -oh. I may have. You better write uh -oh. whoever wrote this thing back in the 70s. Uh -oh, it's actually 90s. This is 1995. So when I was sitting down and playing Earthbound, somebody was like, Ha! I've done my magnum opus D&D session friggin' module, and nobody noticed you did it wrong. <laughs> did you share the error, or does it spoil something? <laughs> no, I'm gonna correct it real quick. Oh, okay. This was the Planescape of the 90s. You didn't need Planescape if you had this module, because you could just go through the hut. <laughs> Actually, this module was printed the same year that Planescape launched. So someone had planes on the brains. Right. <laughs> Insane on the plane brain. Oh, oh no, okay. No, you know what, no, there's not an error in a module. I just was dumb for a minute. That My seems bad. more believable. No, yeah. I, there's not an error. I just missed the note that I made for myself, and now I got it, now we're fine. Eldov, you poke your head into this room. Uh, lit by torchlight, you're poking your head through a door coming out from behind this fountain. And what you see is a huge fountain in the middle of the room, spouting all different colors water in all different color directions. Right in front of you is the, uh, the indigo, the really dark blue, coming out of the fountainhead here. What are the fountainheads? It's probably a good... Uh, questions well, it's, it's this really boring book the indigo fountainhead just turns its head and starts giving a speech for oh. 10 minutes the fountainheads are all <laughs> griffins in a circle around the room uh, in all different colors so the pool in the center is just a swirl of different colors all mixing together and then coming out of the fountainheads going into each of these uh, these are grates in the floor um, Single colors, green, red, yellow, blue, violet, orange, indigo, right at your feet here. Um, looking... Okay, looking up into the room here, you see a door at the top of a short staircase leading up. And that's it for this room. Alright, I pull my head back out, and I uh, 
say to everyone, it looks like the knocks worked. We're somewhere else now. Can we knock <laughs> again to see if that reverts it back to the conservatory? That's a good idea. I'll close the door and I'll knock on it again. Okay. And I'll open the door back up, stick my head through. I didn't hear no knocks. Ah, but the, we're not on the other map, so I don't know the numbers. <laughs> uh, it was three, five, four, I think. Did we write right. down? I'm sorry. Wait, no. I got. I did write it down, but I know I wrote it down wrong because the first one was three. I'm almost sure. Uh, well, let me <laughs> let me do what you wrote down, and we'll see how it goes. Three, five, four <laughs> is what I thought it was. Okay, it says three, five, four. Okay. And then I open up the door. And you don't see fountains anymore. You see something else. I think you got the knocks wrong. I'm looking through the door this time. <laughs> you Whoops. see something entirely different. Now you're looking through this door here. Into the room. And... Floor-to-ceiling bookcases. Lining all around the room. <laughs> These little things here are ladders that can... Uh, are att attached to the bookshelves that can slide around on tracks. Big, big tables in the centers of the room here, covered with open books, and three plain wooden doors set into the wall. This one you're poking your head out of. All right, Eldon has a suspicion, so he closes the door again. Okay, you go well, back into... And then he opens it back up. And you open it back up. And sticks his head through. Stick your head through. And you're looking through into the conservatory. He closes again. Okay. I, what was the knock code in that room? Was it 354? I'll load up the room again and you can see. Okay. Because if it was, I think the knock might just send us to a random room. And we could just open the door normally to go back to where we wanted it to was go. These were the charcoal marks that you had on the floor. So yeah, you used the same okay. knock twice in a row and saw two different rooms. Well, try to, we might as well... well try it again. Maybe it rotates. Well, the, the thing is, uh, I... I I think we should test the other thing too to see if we can use other knocks here. The little girl told us two one five. I think was that what she yeah. told us? So let's try that one. I'll go right, let's find out close if the door. Bound to, bound to rooms or doors or not? Yeah. And I mentioned do. now that you guys can see. I mentioned this door is silver. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's make sure. And then I'll open the door up. And you look into the cons through. look into the conservatory. Okay, so we it does need to be a specific room. Or... Door. Or door type. Alright, well let's try 354 again and see if we get back to the library or the fountains you said in the other room? Yep. All right. you saw a library and you saw the giant fountain. This is going to get real old real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Poke your head through. Eventually, it's going to be late enough that I'm going to need someone else to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back into the library. The fuck? All right, and I'll leave the door open this time, and I'll say, okay, we've got the library again. Do you want to do this room, or do you want to see if we can get back to the rainbow room? Because that room I, looked fabulous. I think we need to figure out the fabulous. nature of these knocks. So let's let's close it and try to knock one more time and see if it's a random door or, or how the hell this works. Okay. It's All right. Room. What? It's where let's you go. let's let's do one more test then. <laughs> what was the one that we got from the original note? Oh, I meant to do three five four again and see if it yeah, I know, but I want to see if we can. Okay, seven seven two three was the original one. Yep, that was the cookie try... recipe or whatever. We'll try that and then we'll do another three five four. Okay. So... And I open up the door. And you poke your head through. And you see the conservatory. Okay. So it needs to be okay, a specific so door. 354. Specific door, or at least a specific door type. So let's let's make a note on here that says silver 354. Well, silver ogre 354. Because <laughs> it could possibly be the ogre room. You mean the that we house. need. Cyclops. I, I don't care. It's all the same. They're all the same. <laughs> don't tell Crazy. the Cyclops that. It's just a fucking ogre with its eye poked out. It's actually not. It's considerably larger than an ogre. Yeah. It's, it's a an dire ogre. ogre. For, it's just an ogre for 20th level characters. Yeah, it's a dire ogre. Dodal is racist. Alright, 354. Okay. 
There were six knocks in the middle, so the door does nothing. You look back in the conservatory. That was five. <laughs> I think somebody knocked their mic in the oh. middle of that. It was three, five, four. All right. Uh, and you look into the library. Oops. I want Brick to get his mic real close to the dice whenever he rolls for the rooms, just so we can hear the random nature. And you look back in the library. This early. I'm God sorry. damn it. Library. I kind of wanted to do the fountain room, but... No, okay. I'm going to close the door. This is bullshit. I don't want libraries. Okay. <laughs> and I open it up again. Open it up again. Poke your head through. Jesus. Library? <laughs> You're poking your head through. <laughs> no! You're poking your head through. This door here. Uh, kind of difficult to see what's going on, because your field of vision is limited in this little corner here, but it looks like an art gallery. It looks like you're looking through this doorway here, and you're seeing uh, paintings inside the far, excuse me, the far wall of the art gallery. And the four statues here, of which you can only see these two, are gargoyles perched on big pillars looking in towards the center of the room. Alright, I pull my head back out and I say I give up this time. It's gargoyles and art. I'm done. You guys can knock. <laughs> That room sounds dangerous. You could probably knock in Table Simulator. I guess it doesn't make a sound though, does it? No, it doesn't. You just well, hold on. Let's. You could tab. It's really slow. That would take too long. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> All right, Taren, Taren's gonna give this a try. Okay. I know focus that through. And you see fountains. Yeah, you think if anyone in this group could find rainbow fountains, it would be able to... Well, I guess they did find it first. Okay, uh, so, so it seems... Yeah, Terrence, ready, ready to step through? It seems to, at the very least, this door send us to a set of rooms. So let's check out rainbow fountains first. Nice job, Terrence. This is why you're our captain. in the library, so maybe this door just sends you where you don't want to go. <laughs> Yeah, that's bullshit. Maybe, Brick was maybe rolling. Just, maybe just cycle through a certain set of rooms. Maybe that was my spot. Too. But why you would there be three of the sort of same order. room in a row? Maybe the others broke and it uh, has to go through all the blanks. Maybe we really need to go to the library. <laughs> maybe okay. Baba Yaga is insane. Well, and it sends us to a random room. Rainbow room, it's where you go. But yeah, uh, Elda is heading into the rainbow room. Well, anybody, we've had enough of this door thing. Is anybody staying behind? No, fuck no. no. What color is the door on the inside? Oops. Oh, I saw... Hello, I'm on my pencil. That was bad. I'm sorry, what color is the door on the inside? Yes. Wooden door. We should probably prop that door open. Oh, but we need to find out where it leads to norm... Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not a wooden door. It's a recessed, uh, a secret door in the stone that you push from this side that you came through. Uh, so it just looks flush with the wall when you turn and look at it. What was the way that the, what's her name, got back through? She really wished to be back in the hut and... She, she described a dream she had where she was walking through a forest that was near the village. Um, but all the trees looked evil. They had faces and teeth and she closed her eyes and thought about a kindly old woman who lived out in the forest that made herbs and medicines for the town. And when she opened her eyes again, the woman's, the old witch woman's cottage was sitting in front of her. She went for the door in there, and when she opened it, it took her back to her bedroom. Okay, so we can always try that. Wishing really hard? Wishing really hard. <laughs> uh, what, what does this door up here look like? That is... Uh, 